In the video today, we're going to answer a viewer question because Jojo asks us, I think we all wanna know right now, what did people use to wipe before toilet paper? The first references of people using toilet paper dates back to the 6th century AD in the Chinese imperial courts and amongst the other wealthy citizens of China. This eventually spread throughout China and by the 14th century, there was an annual manufacturing of around 10 million packages of toilet paper in the Zhejiang province alone. This, however, did not catch on with the rest of the world for some time. Indeed, a Muslim traveler to China in the 8th century noted, they, the Chinese, are not careful about cleanliness, and they do not wash themselves with water when they have done their necessities. But they only wipe themselves with paper. We would have to fast forward all the way to the late 19th century before toilet paper would be introduced in America and England, and it wasn't until the 20th century that toilet paper would catch on with the masses. So this brings us to the question of the hour, and that's what did people use for wiping before toilet paper? What was popular depended greatly on the region, personal preference, and wealth. Rich people often used hemp, lace, or wool. Poor people, on the other hand, would often simply poop in rivers and clean off with water, rags, wood shavings, leaves, hay, rocks, sand, <laughs> rocks. Oh. Rich people often used hemp, lace, or wool. Poor people, on the other hand, would often simply poop in rivers and clean it off with water, rags, wood shavings, leaves, hay, rocks, sand, moss, seaweed, apple husks, seashells. <laughs> well, I guess that could be the three seashells. Ferns, and pretty much whatever else was at hand, and cheap or free. As for the ancient Romans, one of their favorite wiping items included in public restrooms was a sponge on a stick that would sit in salt water and be placed back in the salt water when done, just waiting for the next person. Definitely don't want to get the wrong end of the stick on that one. Ancient Greeks, on the other hand, often used stones and pieces of clay. So let's fast forward to modern times. America's favorite wiping item tended to be things like corn cobs. What were we doing? What are you gonna wipe your ass with? Corn. <laughs> Fast forwarding to modern times, America's favorite wiping item tended to be things like corn cobs and other such plant items, and later the pages of Sears and Robux, as well as Farmer's Almanac and other catalogs like that. The Farmer's Almanac even came with a hole in it so it could be easily hung up in bathrooms for just this purpose, reading and wiping material in one. On the other hand, the 16th century French writer Francois Rabelais, in his work Gargantua and Pantagruel, notes that after pooping paper, he felt was useless. He wrote, Who is foul tale with paper wipes shall at his ballocks leave some chips. He instead recommended that the neck of a goose that is well downed works best. <laughs> Don't know what the goose would think of that. In India and other Middle Eastern countries, the preferred method was, and in some cases still is, to wipe using nothing but your left hand and water, and then, of course, wash your hands very well afterward and don't handle any food or the like with your left hand. For semen, the common thing to do was use old frayed anchor cables, a bit of seawater for rinsing, and other such things that were readily available. The Inuits and other peoples living in frigid regions tended to go with clumps of snow to wipe with, which, other than the coldness factor, is actually one of the better options, it seems, compared to many of the other aforementioned methods like rocks and shells. The seeds of advancement in this arena started to be planted in the mid-19th century, however. For example, around 1857, Joseph Gaiety came up with the first commercially available toilet paper in the United States. His paper, The Greatest Necessity of the Age, Gaiety's Medicated Paper for the Water Closet, was sold in packages of flat sheets that were moistened and soaked with aloe, about 130 years ahead of its time, as it wasn't until the 1990s that toilet paper companies started doing this again. Gaiety's toilet paper sold for about 50 cents a pack, about $14 today, with 500 sheets per package. This wasn't terribly popular, presumably because up to this point, most people got their wiping materials for for free from whatever was at hand, and they didn't find anything weird or gross about the way they were doing things. Around 1867, brothers Edward Clarence and Thomas Scott, who sold products from a pushcart, started making and selling toilet paper as well. They did a lot better than Gaiety, presumably because their original toilet paper wasn't coated with aloe and moistened, thus was much cheaper. Whatever the case, their product was just rolls of somewhat soft
soft paper, though it did include splinters as manufacturing was an awesome at this point. Of note here is that in 1935, Northern Tissue boasted a splinter-free toilet tissue in an advertisement, which would seem to imply that it was still somewhat common for toilet tissue to have the occasional splinter before that. <laughs> How do you remove those splinters? <laughs> Whatever the case, the... <laughs> Whatever the case, the Scott Company also had the somewhat innovative idea of putting the names of the companies that were buying the toilet paper on the paper, such as at the Waldorf Hotel. This was a huge hit with the companies they were selling to, and it helped them stay in business in the early going, where Gaetti had failed. Things really picked up steam on the toilet paper front, though thanks to indoor plumbing. This was because there was nothing easy to grab in an indoor bathroom to wipe with, unlike outdoors, where nature is at your disposal. And, of course, the age-old Farmer's Almanac and similar such catalogues also were not well suited for this purpose, as in indoor plumbing, the thicker paper tended to clog up the pipes. Of course, for those of you in a region suffering a toilet paper shortage today, toilet seat add-on bidets are a thing and typically cost less than $50 to buy and only about 10 minutes to install. From there, not only will you be a whole lot cleaner, but your toilet paper usage will drop to almost nothing, just a little bit needed for drying. Link below if you want to buy one on Amazon while they last. Bonus facts. Speaking of toilet paper shortages, Johnny Carson once caused a near month-long toilet paper shortage in the United States in December of 1973. In his show, he said, you know what's disappearing from the supermarket shelves? Toilet paper. There's an acute shortage of toilet paper in the United States. Americans promptly went out and bought up every piece of toilet paper that they could find. Supermarkets tried to ration it, but to no avail. By noon the next day, pretty much all the nation's supermarkets were sold out. After several days of toilet paper shortages due to hysteria, Carson went on the air to try and explain that it had been a joke and he apologized. But because the shelves were almost always empty of toilet paper at the time, whenever someone would come in, people would buy it all and hoard it. The toilet paper shortage lasted a full three weeks. Another wiping-related question we've been asked a shocking number of times over the years is how do blind people know when they're done wiping? To begin with, a large percentage of the world's population uses water to clean rather than starting with toilet paper. With something like a bidet with reasonable pressure, you just spray for a bit and use toilet paper to dry. It's clean every time on the first wipe. For the blind who don't have access to a bidet, they know they're clean based simply on tactile response. Response. Yes, as long as you're not using some crazy, ultra-soft, practically lubed toilet paper to wipe, it's generally not too difficult to tell when you're clean based on how it feels. Use the cheapo economy TP and it's even easier. Essentially, you just pay attention to how easily or not toilet paper slides across your backside. Rougher glide is more clean. And once you're getting close to being clean, thanks to how extremely sensitive said orifice is, detecting when it's fully free of any objectionable matter is not difficult. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. Maybe it was even useful given the situation right now. If you did, please smash that like button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, check out that Amazon bidet linked below. And thanks for watching.